Hello. Um, I just pulled this French motor out from the shed from up the corner over there and I'm um, just having a look at it out in the open. This was a complete engine. Um, there's two stuck valves there, look. Uh, looks like that one's stuck there. That one just moved slightly as I touched it. I'll show you a couple of the French details. These manifolds of the French manifolds, they've got this exit at the back here. These aren't standard, they, these have been cudged up. It's got extra boss work here and this brass distribution block here. I think this is where an hours counter went on here and there was some sort of a regulator goes on there. You see right down there there's a D shape. No it's not a D shape, it's a it's a shaft with flats. There's the thing that goes on it look. That's like an extension in effect. 59A type um, fuel pump thing look bent. This has got the deeper sump pan, the deeper oil pan from the 4.2 litre engines and it comes right the way down there. It's got an um, 8BA type thing there but it has a thrust button on the front. Um, and some sort of thing there for retaining the... Uh, it's actually a, an adapter that takes the distributor in there. But the gears are the same way as a 59A, which puts the thrust back towards the block, I believe. Um, here's the dipstick. It's got like um, a thing there that you turn and it expands the rubber to seal it. Quite nifty really. And I think this can be fitted to um you know a 59A type. Yeah, if you adjust the lens. This manifold's broken. So what I thought to do I thought I would do is do a quick dismantle and just take stock of what I've got. Measure the bore measure the crank, look at the bearings, are they serviceable, do they need replacing, um, look for rust damage, get things freed up, see what it would take to make this a running motor and you know adapt it to um, car usage rather than military vehicle usage. What I also want to do is to try and conserve it so it doesn't deteriorate any further. I should have done this quite a while ago. But, you know, compared to how some of them have been that I've had, this one's actually probably pretty good, hopefully. Let's hope so, because it was a sizable investment. Let's see if it'll turn over. Um, it might go a certain distance and then get stuck on a valve. I think all the valves that are stuck are already open now. Well it turns over, a few stuck valves. When I bought it you couldn't see there was water inside, then when I took the spark plugs out water started coming out of the plugs. I've got some photos somewhere, if I can find them, I'll insert them here.
Okay, right. Let's get it in the garage then and get it up on the stand and uh, see what we're looking at. Hello. Um, I've just had what was quite a difficult job there. Um, I the uh, let's have a look. This manifold on this side came off relatively okay. These are M10 by 1.25 studs. And these are actually in not too bad condition. But there's one broke there. There's one broke up there. So I had to fit the manifold, uh, fit the engine stand bracket on the other side. These studs, I had a great deal of trouble getting the manifold off. The manifold was already broken. You can see the rusty mark there. But basically I had to smash it into bits. There's a couple of the pieces down there, look. I had to smash it into bits to kind of tackle each one separately. And there was a lot of corrosion on the studs and I've done my best to clean them up. I think this will be okay for what I need to do here today. It's took me about, probably about an hour and a half to get that bracket on there. Okay, uh, something else sure I just wanted to say was, this isn't a nut. This is a cover and you, you undo those three nuts and the nut that holds the crank pulley on is behind it inside there. It's like a conventional nut. That's just there to allow the engine to be turned over. Okay, just thought I'd show that. I've took the dipstick tube out uh, and I've took the starter off. So I'll put it in the engine stand and uh, I'll take, I'll flip it over and take the oil pan off. I've tipped it upside down. I've undone these. These are 13 mil, yeah, eight mil bolts. What I can see is that that is not sitting down. In other words, this dent has pushed this onto the oil pickup that's in there. So I'll lift this off, and the re I'll show you the reason why I'm lifting it off. The reason why I think I'm lifting it off. Yeah, that's it. Kind of vaguely remember now. Inside here is a, a tray, and then inside there is a something that restrains the oil pickup. Now the good thing about these oil pickups is that you can modify them and use them in the 59A type uh, oil pans. You can shorten all this tube in here and you've got some nice bends there. You can weld them all together and use them in the 59A type pans. I've got the camera on with the light. What you, can you see kind of up there, there's a, a nut, a bolt that you have to undo. Don't do my phone much good, is it? But the, the crank and rods look nice, actually, considering it had a, a lot of water in it. You know, that all looks quite nice down there, doesn't it? Looks in nice, rust-free shape, so I'm ever so pleased about that. So let's get this oil pan off. Well, let's get that... Try and get that nut undone. Everything's looking kind of okay in this area here. I mean, that crank is damn near perfect. You know what I mean? The, 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 there's no horrible marks on it or anything. Uh, of course, this is a four inch crank. It looks really nice. Everything looks fine down this end. So I think my worries about the rust and that are unfounded. The other thing I can point out is the cut on the teeth on the starter ring gear is the opposite of early Ford. So um, that's not really much help. You can't really use this. Well, you might be able to use it. I don't know, but I've never tried. I am thinking that hopefully these bearings are in good condition. And um, I might be able to resurrect this one without too much trouble. Just kind of do a top end overhaul on it. Get all the valves freed up. You know, and these have got adjustable lifters. So if I go for just a stock rebuild, as long as the rings aren't stuck, this ought to run. Oh, God. 
fingers crossed I'm looking for cracks on the down on the web there nothing thank goodness okay looks like a good motor and there you can see the plugs you can see the plugs there look fingers crossed I, I ought to be able to get this one running then relatively easily <laughs> famous last words yeah I like the look of this one I could be completely wrong couldn't I um, I clean this piston and that says plus zero three eight which isn't thirty eight there it's point three eight of a millimeter and it's um that's fifteen thou and it also has a thing saying avant that way front that way front so I thought I would um, continue to do some gentle dismantling and a bit of scraping and cleaning and then start looking at maybe getting some of the valves out. I hadn't really bargained on going in for a full engine build but it would be silly to leave it all rusty wouldn't it? So let's just kind of stabilise the condition, clean up the rusty bits and then make a decision what to do with it. I undid those three bolts and then I put a tap down the middle of there, that's a 10mm thread it needed cleaning up. I've now got a 10mm bolt in there and I'm pulling this out. Yeah, I think that's an o-ring and there's a conventional bolt there look which I think is an inch and an eighth so I'll take that off and get the pulley off uh, I've took the front pulley off just slid off nice and easily um, I've took the oil pump pickup off no problems there uh, I've took the flywheel, the clutch and the flywheel off it was an 11 inch clutch and I'm taking the fuel, the oil pump off I'm taking the oil pump off what I noticed was it's different than a Ford so I just thought I'd show it because it's got a stud and a castellated nut normally you have a, a bolt with a head drilled and then you safety wire it so I'm just showing that because it's different than standard Ford practice okay I'll get the oil pump out now I've just pulled the oil pump out and I notice it's got the, uh, an o-ring here now I tried to do something like that on my on that engine that I had low oil pressure on and it, it, it did help so there's the oil pump and there's the modified end there look with a drive for the hours counter and the uh, governor so that's a oil pump these typically run quite high oil pressure because these can you see it's quite a high volume the deep gears these um, these pumps have to supply oil to um, th they have to apply supply oil to the governor to the other th the hours counter and all that plus a compressor has to have an oil food which is like a constant loss back to the oil pan so the volume of oil that that delivers is typically higher than a typical flathead pump um, some people might view that as a problem I'm not sure if it is or not but it might be worth just maybe shimming the thing out a little bit to lower the pressure on the relief in there Okay, I've re revised my estimate of uh, how many valves are actually stuck and it's down to two. I can turn this motor over two full turns and only that one and that one remain open. All the others close. Hang on, shall I just put it on the tripod? Yeah. So look for that one and that one. Everything else opens and closes.
so that one and that one are stuck open so I'm going to give them a little tap Okay, I don't want to create massive lengths of film to edit, so I'll, I'll stop it now and I'll bring it back when I've got some more to show. I, um, I've got this funny noise that I can hear. I've took out number one piston and rod and it's still making the noise. And I'm turning it over and I can still hear the noise. I'm wondering if it might be something to do with in here. Hear it then. Hmm. So I'll, I'll try taking the front cover off and oh, it's already actually got all the bolts out, so maybe I can just take that off. That's where it makes a noise. Well, you can feel something as it goes. You can feel it. It might be just something to do with um, it, it going like sort of holding back and then rocking forward on the free play on the gears as the cam. Probably to do with the tight or stuck valves. Because you can feel it on the cam gear. Yeah, you, you can kind of... Okay. But, uh, so I'll reserve judgment on that then and see what it's like when I've took the valves out. Luckily, um, I ought to be able to compress the spring and take the keepers out and just bring the valve out separately and then knock the valve guide down. So but let's do that on those last two.
that noise isn't there now so it must have been associated with the stuck valves that's a relief no that's a relief okay good little job there um, what I don't think I did show to the camera is I've took number one I think piston out that one there yeah number one and uh, the rods are stamped one and one not left one right one one and one so they're factory matched rods um, these are a six and seven eighths rod but what I also I can show you is that the um, all the rings are stuck that one's okay but the others are stuck so I don't know quite what to do about that you can also see it's quite a pointy pointy dome on the piston as well typical French pointy dome okay so I'll have to get all the others out won't I and have a look at them quite heavy pins as well by the look of the wall thickness on them see their short skirts that's to clear the four inch crank three ring as well I've had very poor results trying to free up piston rings I normally end up breaking them I'm not patient enough okay back in a bit hello um, it's the next day I've taken these valves out cleaned them on the wire wheel which you can hear running in the other room and I've been putting them in this box like this so just put them in a, a bag there but for instance these are the ones from number one number these are the number one valves inlet and exhaust um, and you can see there on the piece of paper I've put a little notch on it one little notch and there for instance on number six there's six little notches and there there's eight little notches just in case the number becomes illegible just a simple little trick you can do so so I've done that side and I've done number five so I thought I just cleaned these up here these are number six and these are number seven you can see that the light brown there on there that's because that one hasn't had oil on it this one's had oil on it so this is like a darker brown but I'll clean this up I'll clean this up I'll show you what they look like when they're cleaned up and then I'll put them in a bag and carry on these are the two valves I've just cleaned up um, the exhaust has a vague kind of circular pattern near the middle there the camera can just about pick it up the inlets I can't see any of that but the inlets are more prone to pitting and on this particular one I can see some pitting on the edge so that one that particular one which came from number six uh, I will see if I can find a replacement for that French valves are shorter than American ones okay so these will go in a bag now with the number six on it no need to show you that you don't need to see me show you putting a valve in a bag do you okay I'll clean those ones up then and I'll bring you back later Right, so I've matched all the valves up, including the two that were separate. Matched them up with their, you know, the cylinder. And I've just taken the all the lifters out. These French lifters are adjustable, but they're longer than the Ford ones because the valves are shorter. So what I've done, I've just used a a trick that I used on one of my other builds, where I just threaded them all onto a boot lace. 
Now, obviously, they have to have a window in them to be able to do that. But that's just kept them all in order now. That one at the bottom is number one. It's the one the furthest this way on number one cylinder. So I'll put those in a bag and put them with the valves. Oh, I had a thought about that noise. What I think it was, because there was valves that were stuck open, as you turn in the cam, you have some valves that are trying to accelerate the cam that are on the downside of the thing and some valves that are trying to accelerate the uh, decelerate the cam because they're on the upslope and I think it was the lack of a couple of valves was getting rid of the deceleration forces and you had an acceleration force so you had a bit where the, the, where the forces weren't even because all the valves weren't in place and that was where you, you just got that little clack on the on the on the gears as it rocked back and forth in in the play so uh, i'll stop worrying about that now i had to think about that last night okay i'll carry on then and uh bring you back when there's more to show hello i've taken three rods and pistons out and i can report my first success these rings are all now free this piston actually, those two rings were free and that one was stuck, but I freed it up with a mixture of running it in the um, ultrasonic cleaner and gently tapping it back and forth and gentle levering. You can't do anything too, too ha you know, heavy handed with these. So that's one, number five that is. So that number five is okay so I'll leave that out now and I'll get another one out and put that in the cleaner because I've got th I can fit three of them in the cleaner so that can stay out now I'll put that out there on the bonnet of the 32 these ones I freed up another one of those on one of the other pistons but these are much harder to get free because you can kind of work from the ends but once you get part way around you're a bit stuck then as to what you can do I'll get another one out and put it in the cleaner. See you in a bit. Hello, I've had a little bit of a session here today and I've got a little bit of success to report. Um, there are eight pistons here and they all have non-stuck piston rings. Now, only one of these, I can't remember which one, had no stuck rings as I removed it. Every other one had one, two or three stuck rings. I apologise, but I didn't film me freeing them off. It's just too tricky. And it's one of those things which you feel like at any moment you're going to break one. But I didn't break one and they all came loose. I don't even feel like sharing my method because you'll... If you break one you'll blame me it's really tricky but I, can, I have successfully freed off all eight sets of rings so what does that mean then so all the valves are out all the pistons and rods are out all the all the big ends there the rod bearings look okay um, the bores don't look too bad so what I think I'm going to do is clean up all the valve pocket areas as I'm saying it I'm trying to think to, in my own mind do I want to do a sort of job which involves hogging out the ports in these bowls here because they have like a restrictor built in I might do that. I'm either going to just put it back together, get it running and put it in the truck, or should I build it up a bit better than that? No, I, I haven't got the parts around me to build up like a, a racing engine. But So I'll just put this in as a 4.2 litre plodder, 258 cubic inch plodder. Um, 
and I might even run it with the French type distributor drive there, the 8BA type distributor drive. I'll have to have a think about that. Or I might put a different cam in it and run it as a 59A type. So that's a decision yet to be made. Okay, right, I had a good session today. Um, I'm getting to be a bit of a messy worker on this job. Uh, these are all the tools that I've used to strip the engine. So, before I start doing anything else, I will probably have a tidy up and clean all these tools because they've all got dirty oil on them. And here you can see some of the tools that we use for unclogging the piston rings. Which I've had zero success with before now, but today I've done it all right. So I think it might just be a measure of that these weren't actually particularly badly stuck. But, you know, that's by the by. Okay. Righto. From this mess then. From this mess, hopefully, something will emerge. Okay. I'll bring you back, as always, when there's more to show. Cheers then. Bye. I've put the engine at this angle like this because I wanted to clean these ports and I didn't want all the rubbish to go inside the engine so I've done it like that so anything that's falling out is going to be coming downwards and I'll put all them tissues in there all those kitchen towel and I also covered up the crank journals don't look too bad. Can you see the restrictive area there in the bowls? I have an idea that these are not inserts. I have an idea that these are directly into the metal. I can't really see like um, an edge there. You know, it's that one's got a little bit of pitting on it so that one will have to be ground in but generally I mean compared to some of the ones I've had some of these look pretty mint some of them look pretty mint but the engine's only as good as its worst one isn't it really so yeah that don't look too bad this is where the restriction comes from on the French engines I don't know quite how you're supposed to go around about removing those. I've got that valve seat cutter thing. I might, I might try and rig that up and see if I can get that to do the job. Okay, yeah, it did not look too bad though. At least, at least I got rid of all that. Well, no, maybe not all of it. That one looks like I've missed that one there, look. And that one. But for instance, there and there. I got rid of that dry. Oh, you can see the sum at the bottom of there. Look. Again, this was a very rough little go around. First little go around. Uh, so I need to kind of get set up and do a bit more. I'm still trying to think about what exactly I'm going to do with this engine. My kind of number one quest is to probably get it running sort of uh, as a 59A clone obviously you've got things like this to contend with but to get it running like as if it was a 59A and I, I might put it in the 32 I don't know so it is looking better than it was. I'm a little bit surprised that these haven't got valve seat inserts. I mean this would be a contender for 1.6 inlets wouldn't it? I mean if you if you look at this as a very simple thing all the pistons are there they've all had the rings frayed up 
All the valves, except maybe one, look serviceable. So this engine could be got running quite simply if you want a stock French military flathead. I wonder, you know, I'm sort of wondering, is that sort of something to do as an initial sort of thing, you know, just get it running more or less as it was. Okay, my phone just made a noise. Okay, I'll continue to clean up the bits I've missed then and then I'll decide whether I'm just going to put it together as it is. In other words, reassemble it more or less as it is, having overcome the stuck piston rings and the sticking valves. Or am I going to just basically take the block and crank and build a... Put a, put a different cam in it and um, valve train. None of no none of which parts I've got. I will bring you back when there's more to show. Hello. Um, can you see here? I've got this stud in this hole. It's a it's a pilot stud for a reaming tool. You see that one there with a the big step. Can you see that this one's been machined away? See that where it's been machined? Well, I say machined, it's done by hand with this. See that? I've just done it with that tool down there. Like that. Reluctant to go any further because I'm very, very close to the seat. There's the tool. Goes in like that. You see it just taking a gentle cut there. I'm worried about it cutting the um, lifter ball. It has been rather time consuming though. And I've had to kind of frig the setup a bit. But it did work. So I need to make the decision, is that okay? And do I want to do that on the other? Well, at least the eight inlets. I don't know how that compares to a sort of standard, you know, 59A or 8BA type. And there's a, just a tiny little lip there now. Whereas before, there's a quite a thick lip. This is the next one along. So I think that's pretty neat, to be honest. And even though it did take me a long time, I think the next ones will be quicker because I've got the tool set now. As long as the tool lasts, I can do all the 16... Uh, sorry, all eight of the inlets. And... If it lasts longer than that, I'll, I'll have a go at the exhausts as well. They make them specific, specifically, to be restricted. So I think that will help um, get it kind of back up to kind of a, you know, a reasonable stock level. Um, anything above that is kind of toward going towards tuning, isn't it? It did take me a long time to do that. But now I've got the setup, I can kind of just kind of go at it a bit gung ho. Before, after. There's the tool, look. Buma. Buma. Model V0. And there's the cutting tool. These are all cold now and, and all these rings are still free. They haven't, you know, gone tight as the pistons have um, cooled. So that's good, isn't it? Okay. Oh, look at that. I forgot to drink my tea. Oh, well. Righto. 
jolly good then I will catch you later bye hello right um, I'm pleased to say that I've done all the basic machining on all the inlet ports so that's at least I've done eight um, the tools working the tools working okay um, you can see it's a bit sort of yeah it's obviously hand made it keeps kind of trying to come out at that point there can you see that it's just sticking proud a little bit which makes the, it cuts undersize at the end so I might need to kind of try and address that and just re revisit some of these or I could now now I've took the now I've hogged it a bit is just kind of do it with a rotary burr what I didn't want to do with though was make a lot of mess if I'm feeling energetic I'll do the same job on the exhausts I, I don't suppose it's quite so important on the exhausts but you know it's probably worth having a go at it I am aware that I have read that you can't hog these bowls out too much because you will hit the water cavity so I'm being conservative okay but I think that should have upped the ante now over the stock unit anyway okay righto I'll bring you back and there's more to show hello um I've not been doing a lot of filming because this is quite an involved job but I have done a initial cut on all 16 of the valves I stiffened up the tool holder by putting that lathe dog on there. The problem is, is that this part here, um, when she's gone so far in, it starts touching on the bore on there. What I will do is I'll make like a collar that's more compact than that, but stiffens up the tool. So... It, I can use that same technique but go in further but anyway I, I have made progress and I now have 16 ports kind of hogged out not massively oversized but just got rid of the French flathead um, restrictions that were built in I mean they're, they're pretty good now but I think I can just go an extra mile on this job and um, get them just a bit better than that hello uh, it's the next day I made this collar just from a piece of tubing I had to just put a boring tool through it and I drilled and tapped it 8 mil. put that um, screw in it to stabilize the tool and I gently reshaped the tool and I've I've now gone in and what I would consider finished this one this one and this one and I'm working on this one and basically I go in until this bolt head just touches the deck face so I'm going to work my way along these and then redo the ones on the other side but I think they look okay to me they look good actually nice job and the best thing is it they're nice and uniform you know if you're doing it by hand it's they end up all over the place I hope I haven't took too much out. Let's uh, carry on though, in for a penny, in for a pound. 
Okay, righto. I'll uh, bring it back when there's more to show. Um, I've nearly finished all the valve seat pockets. Um, I'm going to do this exhaust seat here. Can you see that there's like a step down near the bottom? I'm going to get rid of that and just finish it to the same shape as these. This is the tool. That's the shape there, look. And you can feed it in with this nut here, you feed it in. First of all, I've got to get this in the right place. And what I've been doing is just put a, I put a hose clip on the bottom to stop it moving up and down. What I do, I just got this piece of metal that I'm just using as a gauge there underneath that nut, uh, the, the bolt head rather. Just a, I think a one more half a flat and should do it. No, another one. Yeah, that's now not going under. So I'm going to call that good at that. That matches the others, you see. So that's that. That one's done. Looks all right, doesn't it? They're all done to the same depth. So, uh, I've just got to finish that one there, which is kind of three quarters done. And that's it now. Okay, so I'll have five minutes on that one. And then that job's done. For the, uh, you know, for using that tool anyway. That was a good tool, that is. It's, it's for doing valve seats and things, but I've kind of adapted it to do this job I had to put a second groove on there to get the tool further down into the into the bore because this tool has to go further down than it does for a valve seat but you know it came out okay okay jolly good just go do this one now then I won't bother filming that because um, it'll be just like the one I just showed you okay righto jolly good you take care and I'll catch you later bye I was just having a look here to see if I could see any information. I can't quite make out anything without chipping the paint off. Um, but what I did notice, I was looking at these numbers here. Anyway, I looked here and there appears to be a casting date. 22nd of the 11th, 66. That's interesting, isn't it? So it's not as new as I thought. My my other engine, which I think is dated 64, has inserts, valve inserts. I've looked quite carefully now, and to be honest, I'm not sure at all about the... Well, I'm kind of leaning towards there not being any inserts now, rather than there being inserts in the exhausts. I, I think there's no inserts anywhere. Which is, um, yeah, a bit of a surprise to me. I thought they all had inserts. 
but I think that that job that I've just done has come out pretty well okay that's been hard work that has it's took me about three days on and off doing those things and I have said before I, it's nice to use kind of vintage tools on vintage engines jolly good then another little uh, step in the right direction don't quite know where I'm going with this engine yet whether it's just put it back together get it running or stick a cam in it lift you know adjustable lifters 1.6 inlet valves a bit more of a port job not not nothing out of the ordinary twin carbs yeah I don't know let's see interesting little job for the winter but my but my primary sort of objective was to just stabilize it from the point of view of the uh, deterioration due to it sitting open in the shed and getting rust on it so uh, yeah I haven't made my mind up what I'm going to do but one of the things I could do is kind of just put it back together as a loose assembly um, while I weigh up my opportunities uh, because what I might do is um, get that engine that's up the corner that one there that's another French motor I could get that one out and do the same thing um, stabilize it make sure everything's okay make sure everything is protected and take stock of the parts okay righto jolly good I'll catch you on the next one then bye